once saw a man that looked just like me, as strange as that may sound, but where logic has no fitting, clarity is often found. My story begins on a Christmas Eve, I was filling out cards reluctantly, each time creating a different reason for why I was not attending Christmas this season. This year I am most busy, it would be inconvenient for me to attend this year's Christmas party. My apologies to the family, signed sincerely, Roger Montgomery. Almost finished, I was tired and smug, so on the last card I simply put bah. Humbug. Satisfied with my unique cold style, I flipped the card in with the rest of the pile. I can't stand all this Christmas and decorating stuff. I hung up a few stockings, isn't that enough? I wish everyone would cease their commercial infection. Then maybe I wouldn't have to fill out all these Christmas rejections. Relieved to be relieved of my yearly Christmas chore, I was suddenly startled by a rapping at the door. It was far too late for visitation, so I said, I must abate this aggravation. I stood up from my desk and walked across the floor, and with a turn and a twist, I opened the door. Christmas card with my name upon it, plus the words Merry Christmas was all that was on it. I thought it absurd, so I said with a yell, Have you ever heard of using the mail? I stepped in and slammed the door shut, another one of those Christmas nuts. Unless it's a gift card, check, or cash, this card will spend Christmas in the trash. I opened it hastily, anything but gracefully. No patience meant no pace for me, but I was surprised to see it was written most tastefully. Do not rip this card in two, for it was custom made just for you. Crafted by a magical hand as a gift for you, a gift most grand. To discard or to open, you must decide, but your perfect Christmas awaits inside. I thought, what's behind that last line? It raised my curiosity and boggled my mind. Despite my frustration at the cards impeding, something was different about this Christmas greeting. I tapped it once, then tapped it twice. As I recall, I tapped it thrice. I must be going mad to invest this much thought into a stupid card that someone else bought. My hands were tied, my teeth were gritting. Against my wit, my fear was pitting. My hopeful heart suddenly sank as I saw the card was all but blank. Well, my perfect Christmas is not very thrilling. But then I felt a chill, a chill most chilling. The funny thing, I was still at my desk. The only thing missing was all the rest. Upon my desk was my day planner, neatly organized in its usual manner. I looked to see my most recent entry, for I could not remember. When I found it, I was surprised to see it was the 25th of December. This is too bizarre for me to believe. A few moments ago it was Christmas Eve, and yet there is my writing as plain as can be. I have no time for mysteries. God help me find my brandy. A time like this it would be most handy. Oh, 
most, most exquisite. My desk brought the important things with it. I stood up and I looked around. There was not a soul to be found. A fact most would find to be rather frightful, but I found it to be most delightful. Well, I might as well make the most of it. Who knows, I may grow to love it. Many quiet days ensued as I enjoyed my solitude. Some days were cold and some days were colder. I began to feel old, but I wasn't getting older. As the time passed, so did my finesse. I realized I had gotten myself into a mess. I would sit at my desk to think and ponder. My thoughts would usually begin to wander. I wonder what everyone's doing today. According to my planner, it's the middle of May. Oh, this whole thing has gone way too far. Why did I open this stupid card? Come on, come on. This is it fair. You brought me here. Take me back there. Can you not unsend something after you've sent it? And what sort of card has nothing in it? A card with no writing is a disgrace. Something should fill this empty space. And that sounds like a job for me. Not much else to do as far as I can see. Let's see, let's see. What should I write? This may take a while, try as I might. Then suddenly I was completely smitten. I know exactly what needs to be written. And then, as if forming a piece of art, I filled the card with words from my heart. I miss my family. I miss my friends. This loneliness is rotting me deep within. Oh, if I could just take it back somehow, I seem to be much wiser now. What's the point of this newfound acumen if it's at the expense of being human? And what's the point of this fancy fervor if I have not the desire to go any further? I sat down on the ground as if to die. And with a sigh and a frown, I closed my eyes. And so they remained, for there was nothing to see. Every day was the same in this bleak eternity. And that was that, I became sedated. I simply sat and simply waited for a rescue that was most belated. Time slow to a grueling crawl, that is, if it moved at all. How many years passed, I will never know. But one year, at last, something showed. I was startled awake by a flash in the shake. I instinctively yelled, For heaven's sake! Despite my weak vision, I managed to see a figure in the distance heading for me. I couldn't believe it. Could it be? Is someone here to set me free? Just as I was about to rejoice, I heard a very familiar voice. Roger, Roger, Marie. Marie. This, this was your choice. choice. Questions raced through my mind. Why does his voice sound like mine? He started to draw more and more near. My heart was suddenly filled with fear. My feet trembled, my hands shook. I grabbed my glasses to get a better look. As I put them in their proper place, I saw a very familiar face. What is this? Is it like looking in a mirror? Yes, except you're talking back. Everything is much clearer. I don't believe what I'm seeing. You're identical to my own being. Why is it you look like me? Because it's the only thing you want to see. His mysterious words struck a chord, holding a meaning I cannot ignore. Forgive me, but I'm in no mood to be taunted. But isn't this what you always wanted? Wipe that surprise off your face, you know it to be true. You're finally in a place where there's no one but you. What's going on here? Tell me straight out. Don't make me wonder, worry, or doubt. 
I demand a valid explanation for why I've endured this castigation. I've suffered enough out here alone. All I wish is to go back home. So, if you could just be so kind, spare me the rhythm and the rhyme, and seriously, just get me out of here because I've been sitting beside this freaking desk for God knows how long, hoping that one day I'll wake up from the worst nightmare of my life. I know, I don't know what's going on here. And frankly, I don't give a jolly Saint Nick anymore. Just take me home. And maybe I won't ask so many questions. He looked at me with piercing eyes and suddenly, to my surprise, awareness surfaced and I realized he was about to cut me down to size. At first you make demands with a shout. Now all you want is an easy way out. You want to leave. You find something strange, but in reality, nothing has changed. Your life is the same, can you not tell? Do you not see the obvious parallel? The only difference is that you're not in your home. Either way, you're still alone. Your mind is cold, cruel, and defected. The one family you have is the one you've neglected. But I've neglected no one in any sort of way. Regardless of what you tell me, I know the truth of what you say. You've neglected everyone for your own selfish endeavors. I suppose you think they're going to live forever. Well, now... You never check in, write, or call them. Can you even remember the last time you saw them? We don't have to see each other on a regular basis, as much as I miss their smiling faces. It's just they mean so much to me, I don't find it to be a necessity to go in and out of my way to see them for some holiday. No, if I see them, it will be solely for their presence. That, to me, is true benevolence. Your eloquence betrays thee like ornaments on a dead Christmas tree. Thank you for sharing that allegory. Allow me to share the rest of the story. The story that solely you have woven, for this is the life that you have chosen. Your vague words are irritating and frankly not very motivating. There you go again. Constantly bickering and agitation, call for more communication or association, stuck in a rotation of word stagnation, you are your problem's own causation? Your irritation and childish frustration makes for a bad combination when you demand me for an explanation when all this is is a big illustration. A simulation, dramatization of how your soul has lost salvation. Spending all days in isolation, every excuse of fabrication, and just because you're in a different location, you think only now you need liberation? What you need is self-evaluation. But I have no time for long elaboration, so here's your solid confirmation. This is the sum of your life, your final destination. How's that for motivation? His words struck deep like a dagger that nearly almost made me stagger. I suddenly knew why he was sent and more importantly what he meant. This is the life I live every day. I've grown cold and set in my ways. This is the way I live all the time, whether it's here or there, I'm alone in my mind. Why have I chosen such a dull existence? How much I just want to celebrate Christmas with those I love and those I cherish. I feel my soul has all but perished. Just take me home, would you? I've got so many things I'd like to undo. I understand the circumstance. All I ask for is another chance. Sorry, son, but I'm not buying it. You've made your bed, now you gotta lie in it. Very well, if there's no other way that in this world I shall stay. Wait, sir. Before you go, if you would be most kind, I assume you to be something divine, an angel or spirit or some similar nature, so I would like to ask of you one merciful favor. Go on. Great. You see, when I received this card, it was quite empty, and one day it dawned on me that this was the perfect opportunity to write my belated apology. It's addressed to all my family and friends. It's a desperate attempt to make amends. I suppose someone else could have written something better, but. I assure you, every word is heartfelt, true to the letter. And since I will never see them again, I would like you to deliver it to them. 
Would you do this one thing for me? Merry Christmas. Roger Montgomery. Suddenly all was bright. It felt as if I was losing my sight. Just as my heart was filling with fright, I was swept away by a blinding light. great haste, I put the cards in the bin. There's no time to waste. I must begin. I called everyone that I held dear and greeting them with a jubilant cheer, I said, Let's have Christmas at my house this year. I ran to and fro, joyfully free. I even bought a Christmas tree. And when I looked into its angel's eyes, I couldn't help but surmise. Are you the one that was in disguise? My heart was no longer a heart of stone. Now I know what it truly means to be alone. Everything seemed to fall into place. I now lived with a smile on my face. Every moment of my tribulation was worth this wonderful jubilation. Not one second was spent in vain if it was needed to obtain this new life, this new thinking. I am no longer cold, no longer sinking. I am now full of the Christmas spirit. I want to shout so everyone can hear it. I will hold and keep it always and forever. I will make every Christmas the best Christmas ever. But all these things I consider small when compared to the most important of all. It's sometimes hazy, sometimes crystal clear. This time of year it seems to appear. It's a love that seems to persevere. And the time you spend with those most dear. I once saw a man that looked just like me. He was a messenger from above. This divine outreaching helped me to see. To live is to love. Merry Christmas to all with joy and glee. Written with love and sincerity. Signed, Roger Montgomery. <laughs>